Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be continuing the level editor series. In this video, we're going to be handling the talent map editor in the game. If you haven't been following along, you can find the playlist that includes all the videos for this series in the description below. You can also find the starting project files in the description and a link to the full source code that exists on the Patreon site. Now this is going to be the second last video of this series, so if you want to get notified of when the final video is going to be released, make sure that you're already subscribed and hit that notification bell. Now before we get into it, let's take a look at where we left off. If we run our game, we're able to move the camera around, we can also place instances and edit them, and we can also add lighting into the room. But for now, it's going to be time to work on the tile map. So let's close our game, and first, let's create an empty object that we're going to be using as a placeholder. Let's call this object Object Tile Map Editor. Now, let's switch over to the Object Debug and let's open up the Create and the Step events. Since our Tile Map Editor is going to be using some of the same controls as our debugging, we need to make sure that we tell this debug object when to switch between the two. We can do this by creating a variable called is tile map editor visible and let's set the default to false. In our step event, at the bottom of our debug if statement, we're going to check to see whether the tile map editor is active and visible. We can do this by checking the number of objects that exist within our room. Specifically, we're going to look for the object tile map editor. If the count returns bigger than zero, then this will automatically return true, otherwise it will turn false. We don't need to write out the entire function here, but if you find it more easier to read, then you can have it in there. It doesn't really matter. Now that we've checked to see whether or not the tile map editor is visible, we can scroll up and change the buttons on our debug panel. We can write a small if statement to check to see if the tile map editor is visible. If it is visible, we'll add a button here, but otherwise, let's just continue on and have the same buttons that we had before. Now we need a way to actually switch to the tile map editor, so we'll create a brand new button. This button will just say edit tile map. The function or callback for this particular button is we're just going to use the instance create depth, and we don't care about the X and Y position, and the current depth is fine. We just want to instantiate the object tile map editor. Now on the flip side, if we are already in the tile map editor, let's display a button that will exit this mode. We can create a UI button and we'll just say stop editing tile map. And this function, what we'll do is we'll check to see any time that it encounters our object, so object tile map editor, we're just going to destroy it. Since we're already in the debug object, we should do the same thing when we're exiting our debug by pressing F1. Let's copy this and paste it above. But first we need to check to see if our global debug equals false. If it equals false, then we'll just paste our code in here, which will remove the tile map editor from our room. Now, before we actually get into the level editor, let's open up our room and talk about a few things that we need to understand. In GameMaker, the tile set is going to be set to the room's width and the height. As you can see, my room is 640 by 380. This means I'm not going to be able to draw anything outside of this region. So the easiest way to work around this is to make your room very big. So for this video, I'll make it 5,000 by 5,000. Then we would basically take our camera and we would place it in the center of the room, meaning that we would be able to draw everything at the top, the left, right, and bottom. But knowing that, I'm just going to ignore it and I'll keep my room at the top left so I can only draw to the right and the bottom. So just make sure that you keep that in consideration when you're making your game. Let's close our room and let's switch over to the object tile map editor. We're going to add a create event, a step event, and a draw event. In the create event, we need to keep track of a few things. And yes, we could get this information from the tile set get info, but for now, we're just going to hard code it in. First, we need a variable to store the tile map so we can change it. Let's create a variable called tile map, and let's say it's going to be equal to the function layer tile map get ID. Now, the string that we're going to be passing in here is going to be the tile map that is assigned in our room. And you can see that mine is ts underscore collision, so we'll put that in the function. Now we need to know the size of our tile set. If we look at the tile set, you can see that it is 32 by 32 pixels. So let's return to the create event and let's add that as a tile size variable. 
The last couple variables that we're going to be using is to keep track of the tile map index. This can be an index anywhere between 0 or negative 1 and the maximum tiles that we have. I'm going to set the current index to 0, the minimum to 0, and then the maximum to 2. Now that we have all our variables complete, let's switch over to the draw event because we're going to have to draw some tiles. First, we're going to have to do a little bit of math to convert our mouse position into positions on the grid. But don't worry, this isn't very hard. We can start off with our variable mx, and what we'll do is we'll take our mouse position x and we'll divide it by the tile size, and then we'll multiply it by the tile size to put it back. Again, we'll do the same thing, but we'll use the mouse y components. Now that we have our mouse position on a grid according to the tile map, we can check to see whether we are going to draw a regular tile or an empty tile. We can do this by just checking the tile index current. If the tile index current does not equal zero, then that means that we want to draw a regular tile and we can use the draw tile function. We'll pass in the tile set, the tile index current, and then the mouse x and y positions. On the opposite side, meaning that we aren't drawing a tile, Let's set our color to red, and then we'll draw a little rectangle based on the mouse X and mouse Y position, and we'll use the size of the tile set, and then we'll also say that it is true, so it will be an outline. Now I do see that I have an error in my draw tile, and if I hover over it, I'm missing a parameter. We're missing the frame parameter, which in our case is always going to be zero, so we'll just add that in. Finally, we're going to switch over to the step event, and this is going to allow us to change the tile that we're going to be drawing on. For this, I'm going to be using the mouse wheel, and this might not be the best option for you if you have a lot of tiles, but this will get us started. First, let's check to see if we are scrolling the mouse wheel up. If we are scrolling the mouse wheel up, we'll add one to the current index of that tile. Now we have to make sure that our tile index current is not bigger than the maximum tile index. If it is, then we'll just set our current index to equal the maximum. Now we can copy these lines of code and we can inverse it. That means we'll say if we are scrolling down with our mouse wheel, then we want to take our tile index current and we want to take one away from it. Now our check will check for if the current tile index is less than a minimum, then we'll set our current tile index to the minimum index. Finally, the last thing we're going to have to do is check to see whether or not we want to paint a tile. We can do this by just checking the right mouse button. Again, the first thing we're going to have to do is transform our mouse X and Y position into a position on the grid. Again, we can just say mouse X divided by tile size and mouse Y divided by tile size. Now that we have those positions, let's actually get the data from the tile map that is at that current position. We'll create a new variable called data and we'll say tile map get. We will be referring to the tile map variable that we created in the create event, and then we'll pass our x and y positions. Next, we'll set the current tile map index to the data that gets returned. This is going to be what frame the tile is on. Now, the final thing that we need to do is we just need to call tile map set. We'll pass back the tile map, the data, and the x and y position. So this will automatically update the tile set for us. Remember that this will do the painting of the tile map or also removing it from our game. So let's go ahead and let's hit F5 and run the game. We'll create a light so we can see what we're doing and let's actually edit the tile map here. You can see that our buttons change and by default, we should have a red box. If I right click, I'm going to remove the tile or I can scroll up and down to select the tile and I can paint it. Once I hit the stop editing, now we can run our game. And the nice part about this is even though I didn't have any collision automatically set up, once I run my game and I edit the tile map on the fly, the collisions are updated automatically. So what I could also do is I could remove this part that I just created. And when I move my character, you can see that they are now able to go into the parts that they were colliding with before. So this is a huge benefit to the new collision events that are done within Game Maker. So with that, this part of the video, or I guess the series is complete. We now have instance adding, instance editing, lighting adding and lighting editing. And now we have our tile map setup. 
The one that is left is going to be the saving and loading of levels. So again, if you want to be notified of when that video is going to be released, make sure you're already subscribed and hit the notification bell. Also, don't forget to check out the Patreon site for more tutorials and access to early releases of this video and more, and also full source codes to this project and previous ones. Speaking of Patreon, a special shout out to the following supporters in no particular order. Game Maker Community, Victor, Mika, Sudu, Jujub84, Midnight, Matthew, Pistol, Ira, Helna, and 39 Digits. Once again, thank you everyone who has subscribed in one way or another. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.